everyone. And his talk about is about creating a KDE video community. And you might ask, of course, what video community did you create to talk about this? So, well, I created a YouTube channel, which is this one at the link that you're seeing. Of course, uh, go paste, paste it in the browser, subscribe, watch all of my videos, likes, share, and stuff like that. It's uh, the bare minimum at this point. And I think it really worked well, so I wanted to share my experience with you. First of all, the why I did it. So I thought that YouTube was helping, um, was the best way to create a larger audience because I've seen so that some people um, are a bit lazy, let's say, because they're doing other things during their day. And so they're not having KDE as their main form of interest. So if you do like a blog post, they might not want to read through all of it. Whereas YouTube gets, um, makes you produce a lighter content that may, they might enjoy through the day. And it's easier for them to watch through all of it. Furthermore, a blog post you can you can't actually follow, you should set up RSS and stuff. Whereas YouTube just, you pop up the website and YouTube uh, suggests your videos to more users. So you can get uh, to a wider audience very easily. Then uh, why I chose YouTube and the main reason is that that's what people use. And yes, it's non-open source and stuff. KDE official account, of course, tries to use peer to when it's possible, but you as a person, if you want to reach a larger audience, YouTube is the way to go because it's the most popular platform regarding this. Also, it has lots and lots of useful, useful uh, tools to help you analyze how your channel is growing, what works and what doesn't. So regarding the filmmaking, it's not really important, but I use Audacity for audio and Simple Screen Recorder, OBS is good too. And it's very important to get a decent microphone, like I've talked to some YouTubers and they say, audio is the single one most important thing about videos. Forget about video quality, I mean, not forget, but it's not very important compared to audio. And then try to edit out boring moments, do a bit of uh, editing, zooming in on the important stuff, music, background music, stuff like that, just to make the content lighter and easier for the user to watch through it. They want, by the way, you have statistics and you can see that users don't watch your content entirely, but still, the longer they do, the better. And uh, it's also good to have both like your face in a corner and then the whole rest of it in uh, the background. So next is how I cre actually create the community. And step one is, sorry, I thought I had deleted this slide. So let's, um, yeah, sorry. Step one is to talk about a specific topic of interest. As an example, KDE theming is how I started and use forums regarding those interests to share your videos like Reddit. At the beginning, it's very important to have um, external uh, views, so views coming from links posted somewhere. But after some months, YouTube will start recommending your video, so it's not as important. But if you want to start, you need to have some kind of community that already exists where to post your link into. Then the step two is to talk about uh, stuff in your niche that are of general interest. As an, as an example, videos about new KDE releases are very popular because lots of people are interested in them. They go to YouTube, they Google uh, Plasma 5.22 and your video will pop up because that's what um, that covers the need of the user of knowing what's going on with the new release. And third, try to communicate to other niches, like the GNOME one. Uh, so I try to do some videos where I try out other desktop environments and that revealed itself to be pretty, uh, pretty, it works well. So for the GNOME one, I got lots of people coming actually from GNOME. So now my channel is not just KDE Plasma people, but also some people coming from GNOME. So you're able to create a wider audience, even though you still do mostly KDE um, theme uh, content. 
And regarding topics, of course, you decide. Uh, I did a bit of brainstorming and stuff that I came up with are how to set up developer environments, how to contribute, how to build applications like with CMake and Make stuff, how to write a theme and so on. These are, are things that, I mean, are almost obvious uh, to us developers you just go like create your KDE folder and then go with KDE, KDE source uh, build and it does everything for us at this point. But I remember when I first started KDE and it was not obvious at all and my builds kept falling and I was not able to understand why because I was missing packages and stuff like that. So good videos that show you step by step how do you how to build your first Dolphin application those are really useful. And if you're able to compile, it's really easier for you to contribute as a user wanting to um, join KDE. Then um, there's also actual one hour long, two hour long coding sessions. And I was surprised because people do actually watch those. I thought nobody was going to because what's the point, but people are interesting and they seem to learn also something while doing it. So that's very nice. And also, it's very cool to show what work you're doing, what you're working on, because user, um, you, you, first of all, you will get some first-hand kind of feedback. Of course, you will have the damp kind of feedback where they point out something super obvious that you already know about in like 20 comments and you get annoyed by it. But just realize that uh, what you're doing is not the uh, main concern of the user. So of the, often they say something without really thinking about it. Just don't worry about those kind of comments. But there are like a couple, at least in every videos, that are actually useful for what you're doing. So that might help you develop your product. And yeah, also to keep them updated, to keep them excited and stuff like that. And then this was like the plan. And does it work? I think so. Like I was very happy with how I did. You can see that the green line are new subscribers and the purple one are views. And since I've started in like um, January, it has been always going up. Uh, these are partial data from this month, of course. Also, I haven't published anything because of exams, but I always had like a good um, momentum forward and never felt like uh, it's not working. Always a uh, video after video, I was building up and it was nicely working out. So I liked it. And for another graph, these are the subscribers. And I was actually surprised, like my original plan was to get to 100 subscribers. And I think I did that within a couple of weeks. And that was really impressive. And the start, as you can see, was very step. And then it just kept going at a good pace. And after three months, I got to 1,000. And now after one month, I'm 1,000 and a half. So that's really good and it keeps growing every day, except when you do videos about, about LGBT and pride when it goes down, but that's what you get. And what about money? Because a side goal of it would be trying to partially um, like fund your, uh, your investment with KDE, your work, through uh, either donations or the YouTube monetization thing. And as far as uh, donations goes, uh, they won't be like a paycheck, but for a student, they're decent. Forget about June because it's like uh, a one-off. It will go down uh, next month, but uh, in average, I think I did something like uh, 50 suits. 50 to 60 uh, um, hour monthly. And what I found, found out is that I hate PayPal and Libra Chat because they offer no reliable way to know whether you're getting the money next month as well. Whereas um, if you look at like Patreon, you can see that 
it's uh, slowly but constantly going up. Libra just has one month where people used it and PayPal is uh, crazy because uh, next month is going to be pretty much nothing, stuff like that. So Patreon is the best way forward and I'm finishing my time. There's also YouTube monetization. I think I'll do something like 50 to 60 hour monthly. It's hard to reach, but after four months you can do it. Right now I have 0 0.66 euros, so I'm rich and that's it. So as always, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, comment and share it. Uh, you can check out my, com the, my channel and 10 minutes is not enough. So if you have questions, stuff like that, ask me. And for real, I prepared lots of cool statistics and advices that won't fit this presentation. So if you're interested in it, and my hope is that you are, just uh, hit me up and uh, try, I can help you set up stuff, stuff like that if you want to help, if you want help. So thank you.